Hey everybody, Mike Pfeiffer with Pfeiffer Hobby here again, and today we're going to do update 103. Not very spectacular, but I hope you stick around and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, what I want to show you today is these two locomotives here, 60, uh, 2662 and 2723. They're both GP7s or GP9s, I'm not exactly sure which. Uh, but nevertheless, they were both Atlas, and I have changed them both over to uh, Cato Motors. Uh, let's see how they run. Now let's see if I can unmu them. And let me see if I can back up and connect. Now we're going to connect onto this outgoing train here. And you can see that I have really smooth operation of them now. Plus, uh, the added uh, benefit is that they'll both be able to run with the GP20s, the GP30s, uh, all the other GPs that I have. I think I only have one GP left that hasn't been changed over to, to uh, Cato Motor and uh, I'm thinking about trying to do a video on that. I, people have been bugging me about it. I said I didn't want to do it simply because it takes special tools. Uh, I'm just going to show you the tools. It's up to you to make your own tools. Uh, there's not and nothing I know of that's commercially available or you can do it a different way than I do it. Uh, my problem is trying to logistically find a place to demonstrate that for you and get it all on video because unlike a lot of channels I don't have a whole poop load of uh, cameras. Um, so I only have one camera so I've got to split the duties up between uh, trying to put the motor in and getting different pictures and angles of what I'm taking a picture of. But I'm going to give it a shot. I'm not sure that I'm going to be successful at it, and it'll go on the how-to channel whenever I get it done. Uh, but for now, uh, that's what I wanted to show you about those two GP7s or 9s. And now let's just take a look down here at the engine house again. Okay, down here this pretty much looks like it has before, and I have not done anything over in this area here again. But what I have done is I've made up my mind that both of those tracks are over there are going to be engine tracks. I've moved the caboose track over here and I'm just going to put up with however many maintenance away cars I can get in uh, that track there. If I come back around here and you can see that I have a few. I still have room for more cabooses, cabise, whatever it is. I finally took the, uh, this fueling facility and cut it in half. I'm going to put the fueling facility right here. Not sure if I'm going to use this tank or those tanks. You guys can let me know what you think about that. Uh, the sanding facility will go right here because I think that's an opportune place for it to be and it doesn't clutter up the engine house uh, being here. So that is in the works and I will likely start working on that when I get through with something else and I'll tell you what that'll be or at least what my next thought is. Um, but that's pretty much it for the engine facility as you can see back here in the background back over here. I put some cars in the sidings uh, if I swing the camera around and you've already seen it and probably noticed it I put cars at most of the industries along the way and I have filled up my yard once again with cars to be shuffled and moved out. So it's kind of back to looking like a railroad instead of an abandoned uh, yard facility. I still need to do something to this yard. Um, it just looks awful barren to me. And I'm trying to think of what else I can put in there to uh, enhance it some. I am going to put a couple of yard lights in there, maybe three, 
one in the middle and one on at each end. Uh, that's down the road, I think. Of course, everything is down the road for me. But anyway, uh, as you can see, it's starting to kind of look like a like a yard again, and like there's something going on on the layout here. Uh, today, as I said, I've got two trains running around out here. I've got them spaced pretty evenly, uh, considering there's two different sets of locomotives there. I've got them spaced pretty evenly, um, and they've been running around for quite some time. What else can I tell you? Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to turn around and tell you at least what my plan is, and I've already told you one of them before. Actually, I've told them both to you before. But what I have next on my plate, I guess, is what I'm saying. Okay, what I really, really want to do is I want to get this area done. Um, there's not a whole lot to getting it done. Uh, it all involves painting the rails, all the rails around, all the way back to there, um, and ballasting the track, and getting the road uh, lines on the road, and then putting some vehicles out there. Um, Pretty much this area is done. There's only one thing that I realize that I haven't done, and that's put a little utility road right down the side of the track here over to the road so these guys can get to their little um, uh, speeder shed over here. But uh, that being said, that's a real easy do. Um, everything on here is really a real easy do to get this section here done, but I'm getting a, I'm getting a hankering, if that is such a word, uh, to get this area done. So I'm thinking that that'll be the next next thing to be done. Now we're going to go down here and tell you what the next one is after that. Okay, I'm also wanting to get down these houses down here. I, I need to get this scenery done right in here. It's just one of the things that's just been holding me back. Get some fences in between those houses and get them to looking like they belong there and like they've been there for a while. Put some uh, deciduous trees in there and that kind of stuff. And just get that area all touched up in there. Uh, that's another thing that's been driving me crazy. Uh, not crazy, but it's just one of the things I've been wanting to do. I'm already crazy. I don't need to be driven there. But uh, anyway, and then once this project's done, I also get tired of every day looking in the window on the outside of the garage and seeing the, the loop of track that goes in there unfinished. So between those three things, and then somewhere along the line, finding the time to put the lights in the yard and some uh, lamps over in the uh, at the engine house, um, and some other details and so forth. I guess you noticed the cars. I forgot to mention all the cars out parked out there and stuff. But anyways, you saw what's going on there. Uh, those are the things that are kind of just in the back of my head. And then I'll work my way out here to the front and the other area I showed you here. Um, I guess what it boils down to is my fear of getting done here. Um, I don't really want to get done, and I don't have anything to do. But I have telephone poles to put in and other things to do. But anyway, as I said, I'm gonna, the next thing I'm going to do is try and work on the video of how to put Cato Motors in these Atlas locomotives. And I'm going to take you out and show you just a very, 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 very brief update on the Mustang. Okay, here she is. Uh, I know we're going to have some traffic come by, schools back in, and it's like a racetrack out here. But anyway, I don't know if this picture, if you can see anything different, but I'll show you what it is. It's this piece right here. It's a carbon fiber uh, duckbill spoiler. Um, I saw it on some other cars online. I like the look of it. Look of it. So I got one. So there she is with a, with a little spoiler on her. And... Uh, I'm enjoying it. Thank you guys for watching. Okay, that's it for today. Um, what I forgot to tell you guys uh, through the video is I took the time the other day to take all the models down off of here and clean off all the shelves and the dust and dust all the shelves and everything. Got all that done, cleaned off my bench over here, really kind of cleaned the whole, I didn't clean the layout, but cleaned everything else, all the peripheral stuff in the layout. And I came in here and mopped the floor the other day on the on the uh, rubber tile, and I couldn't believe I got about two pounds of dirt off this floor. But anyway, the uh, the train room is kind of spick and span right now, and I'm kind of happy and proud of that. 
But uh, that's neither here nor there. The whole fact is, I hope you enjoyed the video today, and what? Thanks for watching.